All right, everybody. Welcome to the Health Transformation Podcast and uh, webinar and Instagram Live or whatever it's called. And uh, good to have you guys here. Um, so today we've got some really important things to talk about. We're going to talk about optimizing your health with CBD. Now, this is something I get asked every single week. Reagan, what is CBD? What's the best kind? What do I, you know? What do you think uh, I need to do um, that that might help me with my pain levels? And so that's what we're going to uncover today. Is we're just going to open the kimono, so to speak, and show you guys the difference between THC and CBD, and hopefully dispel a lot of myths around this because there have there have been uh, significant since Nixon was uh, the president. Nixon demonized uh, anything that dealt with hemp or marijuana, and it was, it's a plant that's been used in Chinese medicine for over 3,000 years. You can go back and you can see some of the Egyptians actually uh, had hemp that was buried with them. So it's not like this is a new medicine or a new plant, but it did get uh, demonized with the Nixon administration where, where uh, marijuana got lumped in the same category as like heroin as far as uh, no medicinal benefits, um, and so it has been illegal for decades until now recently. I think Colorado may have been the first state to legalize uh, the use of medical marijuana and medical cannabis and even recreational cannabis. And Utah, uh, as many of you know, just Utah just uh, passed Proposition 2. And so now you can actually go across the state lines and you can, if you have a prescription from your doctor, you can go across the state lines and bring back uh, medical cannabis, and there's nothing illegal about it. Uh, Utah is just in the process of, of putting together the structure so that we actually can um, administer uh, CBD. So pretty soon we'll have dispensaries and uh, we'll have the medical use of cannabis. So, so uh, now you say, well, tell me, what is it, Reagan? Because all I knew is it was like hippies in the 60s, getting high, smoking a joint. And uh, so today we're going to talk about that, but I think before we dive in, we need to take a quick little view of the landscape of healthcare because the medical uh, definition of medical necessity has got to be something that's treating a disease, treating a condition, treating a disorder. And at East West, one of the things that I've always looked at is I've said, now, maybe there's a better way we can actually optimize health besides just focusing on a disease pattern. And so uh, I saw this quote in Medicare, the Medicare guidelines about four years ago, and it just shocked me. And it, said, it, it just made me believe even more in our mission here at East West, which is to end pain and chronic disease for as many people as possible. We actually have a goal to end pain and chronic disease for a million people by 2025. And so that's, I'm always looking for creative ways of how can we expand the mindsets of people when it comes to their health so that, that you all have health independence. That's the goal. But, but this is the definition that Medicare has in their guidelines. And what they say is care that seeks to prevent disease, promote health, and prolong and enhance the quality of life is not considered medically necessary. So I don't know about you guys, but what we're gonna be talking about today is all considered not medically necessary because we are talking about disease prevention, promoting health, prolonging and enhancing the quality of life. All those things, that's our mission at, at East West Health, but the Medicare guidelines specifically call out that, that those, those particular things are not medically necessary. So if you go to your doctor, don't get frustrated because your doctor is doing the best that he or she can the only problem is it's the system that's not designed around true healthcare. It's actually a disease care model. If you look at 95% of the world's population, uh, there's a third of those that have more than five chronic diseases. 95% of the world's population have some type of internal issue. And so I don't know about you, but hopefully if you're someone who's struggling with anxiety, if you've got depression, if you're struggling cognitively, if you want to optimize your health, if you're struggling with high blood pressure, stick around because today I'm going to be talking about how CBD might be a solution for you. If you look at what 76% of visits to the doctor end in, it's they end in a prescription. Now, what happens to our health if we just focus on a prescription? Well, you're going to end up on more and more prescriptions. There's one of my favorite books, and it's called Are Your Prescription Drugs uh, Killing You? And it's written by a pharmacist, and he went into a nursing home, 
and he took every single one of the patients. There's 300, I think there's 330 beds in this uh, nursing home. And he went in there and he, he did an experiment. He said, I'm just going to take every single one of these patients off all their medications. So 100% of their medications, they removed them from that. And he wanted to see what kind of the, the side effect, what would happen. And 97% of these people stayed off their medication. There's only 3% that needed to get back on some medication from complications they were having without it. 97% actually had a better quality of life. About half of the patients left the nursing home. They started getting their, their health independence back. So if you have someone, a loved one, someone you really care about deeply, someone who you wish that they had a little more health independence, so maybe they could uh, join you on your hikes or go on uh, a family trip or just you know be happier, you know, make sure it just send a quick uh, Instagram message uh, or a direct message to them. Uh, say, get on this uh, because we're going to be covering some very important information. So, so right now, um, we're going to talk about a little bit about CBD. But right now, just to give you a perspective of how important this is, there are more people killed from overdoses from opiates than there are that die in automobile accidents. And you guys know how important it is to buckle up, drive safe, all those things. But right now we have more people dying from this because we've got this opiate crisis. And I look at CBD and I said, maybe this is one of those compounds that is, we use it as a bridge at East West. So we, we always look at what's the underlying cause, how can we correct that so that you have as close to permanent healing as possible. But um, we found that CBD can be one of those things. So what is CBD? Well, it's uh, cannabidiol. And so cannabidiol is an oil, it's a fatty acid uh, that's highly rich in nutrients that's found in the hemp plant. And it has, um, uh, you know, it's, it's, it has anti-inflammatory properties, uh, analgesic properties, which means it helps with pain anti-anxiety it even helps with spasms so if you have muscle spasms and it can do that all without um, any uh, euphoria or lethargy so so cbd is is the opposite of that or not the opposite but one of the other components in marijuana is called thc and thc is more of the active component that can give you uh you know that that feeling of being high or buzzed now cbd can actually if you have strong cbd it can relax your whole nervous system to the point where you do feel a little bit um, uh, relaxed, almost like you've, you've uh, you know, taken uh, something that is psychoactive. But the THC is the real component that that's where you get stoned or you can get high from. Um, but what the scientific and clinical studies show is that CBDs, uh, CBD oil in and of itself without the THC can be effective in uh, rheumatoid arthritis, um, diabetes, alcoholism, PTSD, epilepsy. And I'll come back to epilepsy because that's a, one of the most exciting components of CBD. And then also in antibiotic resistant infections and nervous disorders. So, so with epilepsy, um, you know, one of the, the things that we, we've seen is we've had several of our patients um, who, you know, they're, they're born with some type of uh, epileptic condition. You know, they have grand mal or petite mal seizures. And one of the things that we've recommended is we've said, well, why don't you use some Charlotte's Web CBD? It's a company that was founded based on uh, this, this girl, Charlotte, who was having seizures and the medications were toxic. It was, uh, her body was not re responding very well to those. So they said, why don't you try some um, CBD? And so she tried the CBD and her seizures just completely went away. And so very phenomenal. Um, CBD is something that uh, if you look at it, um, it's, ex it's been explored at different academic centers in the US and other countries. But CBD, uh, some of the major conditions that we've seen it uh, treat very effectively uh, is chronic pain. Um, we see it with an insomnia, anxiety, and depression. Uh, Tim Ferriss, who uh, many of you may watch his podcast, I'm a big fan of Tim Ferriss, um, and uh, just his work, I, I love how he deconstructs things uh, like in a learning process, so you just get down to the truth and the essence of what, you know, how you can like grasp like complicated topics or subjects. But um, one of the things that, that Tim Ferriss has been experimenting with is he's had a lifelong history of insomnia. He's just a chronic insomniac. 
And he found that using CBD was, uh, has been one of those breakthroughs that have actually helped him sleep very well through the night. So, so it, it's, it's a great treatment and we'll get into uh, you know, dosage and usages in just a second here. Chronic pain, some of the things we've seen is um, systemic pain. It can work great there. Rheumatic arthritis, so if you know someone who's got the autoimmune condition, even if they're on uh, some of the uh, heavier drugs, uh, maybe maybe they're on Humira or methotrexate, which are commonly used uh, drugs to treat uh, rheumatoid arthritis, CBD tends to be uh, much safer. If you're using a pure extract of CBD, we found that it does not influence medications uh, half-life. But if you're using a CBD that is, you know, it's synthetically derived or they're using just, they, they only have a few of the what, what are called terpenes in it, then that can actually extend the half-life of a medication. So you do want to work with a physician before you just start using CBD. And I would even recommend that. Uh, we, we make sure if you come into East West and you ever purchase CBD, we sit down with you and we talk about what your goals are, what you're treating, because there are different variances in CBD. There's different terpenes and then there's different strengths. So um, you want to be careful if you're on medication, make sure you talk to your doctor or come in and talk to one of our physicians here and we'll make sure that you're getting on the exact dose that you need because uh, we don't want your medication to be amplified. If, if that can put a lot of burden on your liver. So osteoarthritis, great for osteoarthritis. We treat uh, thousands of patients every single year for osteoarthritis in either their knees or their hips or their shoulders. And uh, we give them CBD oil because what we find, and especially um, what we find after we've treated them with some regenerative medical therapy like stem cell therapy or PRP, is what the CBD oil does is they put it on topically. And not only does it relieve the pain, but CBD is like food for stem cells. There's a breakthrough research. I believe it took place in New Zealand, but they took, um, they took stem cells from the gingiva of a patient. And they took uh, you know, two different samples. And in one sample, they put them in a, a Petri dish. And, and then they, they fed one of the, the samples of stem cells. They wanted to see which of the, the two samples of stem cells would grow faster, the one that was fed CBD or the ones that was just fed the typical amino acids and B vitamins and fatty acids that are typical when you're expanding stem cells. And the stem cell expansion um, actually was more prolific in the, the stem cell uh, sample where they use CBD. So, so we use CBD to actually enhance our stem cell therapy and enhance your body's own proliferative abilities to, uh, to, to grow and regenerate tissue. So uh, the other thing that we've seen is if you've got anxiety. So if you look at the brain, um, anxiety and depression, anything that's been around chronically, now the University of Colorado, what they did is they looked at several conditions of the brain and they, they had this hypothesis where they said, if a person has uh, chronic depression, chronic anxiety, PTSD, addictive uh, disorders, is there a, a, a common thread? And they hypothesized that inflammation was that common thread. And so what they did is they took a variety of patients, all who had these, these kind of chronic conditions, and they found that yes, indeed, there, there's, there's two markers they looked at. They looked at IL-6, and then they looked at the tumor necrosis factor alpha in, in the, the samples, in the blood samples of these patients. And they found that if you have chronic anxiety, uh, chronic, e even chronic insomnia, chronic depression, addictive disorders, PTSD, all of these things can be traced back to one root cause, which is inflammation. And so CBD, one of the studies that has been done is looking at the inflammatory effects on the brain and, and CBD can actually calm some of that inflammation. And so uh, it, it really, uh, you know, it, it really is, is not uh, going to cure the inflammation. There's, uh, there's usually some underlying issues. But if you're looking for a non-drug, uh, non-habit-forming drug, um, this may be a great way to go because if you've, if you've read the book by Kelly Brogan, who's a psychiatrist, it's called The Mind of Your Own. What she did is in her research, she found that even a single dose of like an antidepressant or a benzodiazepine, some anti-anxiety medication, even a single dose can cause brain damage. 
And in some cases, that brain damage can be permanent. And if you look at the amount of kids that we're putting on Adderall or Ritalin and we're giving them these diagnoses at, at a very early age, and then we're putting these drugs and we're manipulating their chemistry when their brains are still developing, we're causing irreparable damage for the rest of their life. And so this is where I think CBD, I'm really happy to see what's happened in our society where people are standing up, even in a conservative state like Utah, go Utah, um, we're standing up and we're saying, you know what, we, we are uh, done being fed myths and lies about uh, this plant. We want to know the truth about it. And so um, now it is something that's legal. I remember when we first started carrying CBD, we were carrying it for about six months and then uh, we got a call from the medical board and they said, you know what, um, we, need to, we need to make sure that what you're doing is, is legal, there's no THC in it. And so we had to stop carrying it for about six months. And then they said, okay, everything's fine. You have to have less than a, like a 0 0.03 or 0.3% THC. And then the rest of the parts are all CBD. And, and so we proved that our product does have that. And they said, okay, you can start selling it again. But I thought it was kind of interesting because here it is, this natural fatty acid. Um, we, we have an entire system in our body. We've got this endocannabinoid system. And those endocannabinoid receptors need to be saturated with the CBD or these fatty acids, just like we need vitamin D, just like your body needs vitamin C, just like your body needs hormones and neurotransmitters. Our bodies do need the, the CBD as well. And so um, very interesting. So now we're actually, you know, we're, we're making progress. And I think part of it is just access to knowledge, access to information. And then the other piece is just getting rid of the stigma behind it. Um, so... All right, so let's talk about CBD as a nootropic. And if any of you have read my books or you, you know, talk to me in depth, you know I'm a big fan of brain health. And I've got a book called uh, Brain Rejuvenation. Um, so I definitely recommend you guys get that. You can go to Amazon and pick up a copy there. You can come into the clinic. And uh, if you're nice to everybody, I'm sure they'll give you a copy of it here. Um, I've got my newest book called Your Healthy Self. And in, in that book, I do dive deeply into how to keep a youthful young brain. So I show you some of the, the, the secrets of living to be about 120, maybe 140 for some of you, depending on uh, what age you are right now. But, but here's some things that we found is uh, what CBD can do. So if you look at CBD, um, even on something like uh, schizophrenia, they found that CBD can enhance cognitive function. One of the things that one of the ways that it works is through its anti-inflammatory and antipsychotic characteristics. And then they've also found in several research articles, uh, specifically from the University of uh, Waller Gang, they have found that using CBD actually helps improve test scores uh, for particular subjects. And if you look at, there's, there's been 27 different uh, articles published on the cognitive benefits, not just for schizophrenia, but also for improving your uh, ability to learn, ability to memorize, ability to relax enough to take in new information. Um, of those 27 articles in the last 27 years, they all show favorable effects of using CBD as a nootropic without any uh, delirious uh, side effects. So, so very powerful. Um, let's talk about blood pressure now. And so, by the way, if you have questions, um, feel free to type them in. If you have comments, uh, type those in. Um, I'm, I'm, I am flying solo today and my tech skills, I need some more CBD to help my tech skills, but I'll do my best to answer those, but I can see it on the screen. So, um, once again, uh, um, appreciate you guys being on here. I think this is uh, something so important that you get your health independence. So being on this webinar, being on the Instagram uh, live, uh, it, it's hopefully I'm giving you just a little small step to increasing your overall health independence. So, so if you have high blood pressure, um, and if you don't know if you have high blood pressure or not, it's actually super critical that you find it because the worst case is uh, one of my patients who they were always worried about her husband. And they said, oh, he, he's the one that has had two heart, heart attacks. He's been on hypertensive meds for about 20 years. He's the one that seems to run really stressed. But then the wife never really got her blood work done. She never checked her blood pressure. She never really thought about things because she always thought she was healthy. And then this was about two years ago. Um, that wife was just uh, doing work around the house and all of a sudden she started slurring her words. And her family didn't think anything of it, or her family was really concerned. She still didn't think anything of it. She was in a conversation, she slurred a couple words. 
and she didn't know what it was, didn't go to the doctor. And then it happened again, same thing. She didn't do anything about it. And then the third time what happened is she went in full on stroke and suddenly half of her body went paralyzed. She couldn't talk and uh, it persisted. And so it persisted for about a year and she could only say single syllable words. But one of the things when she came to us, she, you know, her husband described it because she was single syllable words only. Her husband said, man, uh, we had no idea that she had this hypertension. And when she got her blood pressure checked, her blood pressure was like, almost 230 over about 110. And so it, it can induce some very significant side effects. And luckily with her, I mean, we've been able to treat her and we've got her to where she can say full sentences. She's cracking jokes again, but it took a significant treatment for her brain. We did uh, brain therapy to, to calm the inflammation in her brain. And then we also have used CBD with her and now she's talking again, laughing. But if you do have high blood pressure or if you're not sure if you do, get it checked. I mean, you can go to like uh, any, there's a lot of pharmacists, pharmacies, you can just go through and put your arm in the blood pressure cup. Don't, don't put this thing off, but a single dose of CBD, what they found in studies, um, this was with nine uh, healthy males given either a placebo or 600 milligrams of CBD. And they found just a single dose reduces blood pressure, which reduces stroke volume. It also reduces resting systolic blood pressure. And this was some research done by Dr. Sullivan and Gary Tan. So the other thing that CBD has been proven to do is with fear of public speaking. So I should have taken some CBD today so that I wasn't nervous to talk to you guys about this. But actually, it's not too bad because you guys are really nice and quiet. And I just feel like I'm having a monologue with myself. So now you guys uh, feel free to chime in at, at, at all if any of you would like to. But here's some of the studies where they found um, and this came from the uh, Department of Medical Research um, and at the, uh, at actually from Puerto Rico. Interesting. Um, so what they found is CBD significantly reduces the subjective anxiety during and after public speaking. And so they took uh, 50 men and women aged 18 or up and they did a double blind. And what they found is that they, with the groups that got the placebo versus the group that just got 100 to 200 milligrams, they did better than the group that didn't use the CBD at all. So if you're going to do public speaking, I would not recommend going any higher than about 300 milligrams. Otherwise, it may relax you a little too much because you need some of that anxiety and some of that, that uh, adrenaline to get you going. So. All right, so CBD, um, if you look at it, the half-life of CBD can be anywhere from 18 to 32 hours. I know I've taken CBD in the morning, and I can still feel the effects all the way through the day, sometimes at night, and it can come in waves. So be aware of that. If you want this stuff out of your system quickly, this is not for you, um, especially with THC. There's, uh, for some reason... Uh, some people really enjoy that experience of, of being somewhat high on CBD or THC um, when you use uh, like medical cannabis. Um, but with me, with my genetic makeup, I just want that stuff out of my system as quickly as possible. So CBD can have a similar impact. If you look at your genetic uh, chart and if you've got this, this gene variant called Calm T, that might indicate that you would not do as well with uh, THC uh, um, as other people might, but you'd probably do pretty well with CBD. Um, so what we look at is you look at how much should I take? Well, one milligram to six milligrams of CBD per 10 pounds of body weight. So if you weigh 100 pounds and you just want kind of like a micro dose, then you take 100 milligrams. If you weigh 100 pounds and you want to take like the full uh, therapeutic uh, dose, then you would take 600 milligrams of CBD. And if you're trying to go to bed at night, what CBD will help you do is sleep through the night. What THC will do is help you fall asleep quickly. And so uh, right now in Utah, so if you're just using the CBD, um, then what, what you're going to do is just use a higher dose. So maybe uh, if I, would, I would say if, if you weigh uh, about 100 pounds, just so I can do the math simply, um, then you'd want to do about 500 to 600 milligrams. So, so um, quickest way to get it in your system is uh, using a, a vaporizer. Uh, that's the fastest, fastest acting. We have vape pens here that a lot of our patients love, especially if they have kind of these acute panic attacks. It's a great bridge until we can get the inflammation in the brain calmed down. Capsules are going to be slower. Uh, using a, a tincture, if you put it under your tongue, 
um, that's going to be active in about 15 minutes. So, so um, those are some of the ways you can get into your system. Um, we use Charlotte's Web exclusively here. And Charlotte's Web, not only are they the country's largest distributor of, of hemp and CBD oil, but they also have the purest and they have the longest track record of safety with their CBD. And uh, I, I've, I've looked at uh, many different CBD companies and I always tell people, I'm like, just try it. You know, if you've got, uh, I got patients every week or like, ah, try my new CBD. I got this, this, uh, the best CBD around, but I'm very sensitive to it. And I can, I can just simply uh, try a little bit. I can try less. I can try about 50 milligrams and I feel it. And I know exactly the potency of the CBD just by trying it. And so not only that, but of course, Charlotte's Web has done some phenomenal things um, with kids like Charlotte Phoebe, who the, this is you know, named after. Um, but it's also Charlotte's Web has a, a very uh, robust set of um, scientific uh, researchers and they have peer reviewed studies. They have people looking over their shoulder, just really um, diving into this, this product. So now um, very powerful stuff. Um, uh, you know, they have some of the widest arrays of uh, beneficial um, CBD, CBG, other phyto compounds, but they also have the highest level of terpenes. And so terpenes is what gives it some of the flavor um, that, that you've noticed if you've if you've ever tried it. Um, so come in, get, get some Charlotte's Web. We will tell you exactly what strength you need. You can get full strength, extra strength, or the original strength. And the original strength is the strongest. So the OG, um, be careful with that. It's, it's very strong, very powerful. But um, all you need to do is come into the office. We'll help you out. Or you can email us um, at uh, info at gowellness.com. Um, and we will get uh, get some information. So thank you so much for being here. That is uh, our time is up, and so love you guys. And uh, next week, if you guys have any questions on this, just simply info at Go Wellness and plug it in. Let me know what you're thinking about. Let me know what you'd love to hear about, and uh, we we will look forward to seeing you next week. So take care.